tree includes a number of different scheduling options depending on what you're trying to provide to your clients and students. So to schedule an offering, so again, taking something that you provide and making it available for students to register and or pay for, you can access that by clicking on Schedule under Manage Your Schedule. Now when you first visit this page, uh, you'll notice these three things uh, at the top here. The first is Add Schedule to Your Calendar. So this is if you want to provide um, a sync to one of your calendars, like if it's GCAL or iCal, um, or maybe it's an Outlook calendar, um, you can do that here by following the instructions that are listed. Now it's important to mention that this is just a, a one-way sync, so it's pushing information to your GCAL or your iCal, and that it is limited by how often iCal and GCAL refresh and check the calendar feeds. That's not something that Offering Tree sets, but that's actually something that um, Apple and Google set um, on their own. So it can take a while for that to refresh. So just know that if you're using this feature, uh, it may be that you're limited by what Google's um, refresh time is or iCal's uh, refresh time is. And if you want to see uh, additional information about that, please um, see our help articles that specifically lay out all of that information so you know um, what that technical details are for the refresh rates. So that's the first button in terms of how you can go ahead and add a schedule to your uh, personal calendar if you want to do that so that you can see what's been signed up for. If you want to embed this onto uh, an external website, you can do that just by clicking on this, and then you'll see that you have different options that you can choose. You can choose to show these different views if you want to show it by week or if you want to show it by this more of this tile format of your courses. You can change that, and you can also decide how many events you want to show at any given time. So maybe I only want to show five, and it updates the code here. And then once you're ready to put this on your site, you can just copy this to the clipboard, and then you can go ahead and paste that within uh, whatever other website uh, hosting uh, service that you're using. So that's a way for you to be able to embed your schedule on another website if you don't want to use Offering Tree's uh, website features. And then this availability one is if you're actually uh, creating uh, appointments. And so this is how you can uh, set up a schedule, start time, uh, an end time, and you can even schedule time off. So you access adjustments to your appointment schedule by clicking on that little purple button that says edit your availability under schedule. So the final bit of uh, uh, kind of orientation here is to notice that there's a date picker. So you can choose um, how you, you know, if you want to go to a different week, you could simply advance through the calendar and see the different options in the different weeks, and it'll show your availability. If you want to go back to the current date, you'll see that it's always highlighted with uh, that color there. So in this case, it's a light blue, light teal. You can click that, and there's today's date. Now, if I want to schedule an offering, I can just click the Add button. So let's say I wanted to schedule something for tomorrow. And notice that I get a series of different options. So if I want to just schedule this as a one-time class, or if I want to schedule it as a recurring weekly class, that's it's always the same class offered at the same date, same time, every week, then I would do that. And this is really for if you want clients to have to register each time, um, then you would use this schedule and offering feature. If you want to schedule a series, this would be like um, classes. Let's say you're doing an entire course that goes for four weeks and you want students to register once and only pay once for the entire series, then you can use this schedule a series feature. And you'll notice that there's a video here that explains the difference in terms of how you use this more advanced feature for setting up a, a course. And then if you want to adjust your availability for um, you know, your appointment calendar, you can do that here by blocking off some time. Let's say you need to just block off some time for a doctor's appointment or a vacation. You can do that by clicking here. So I'm going to go ahead and schedule an offering. In this case, I'm going to choose one of my existing offerings, and I'll choose an intro to mindful yoga. I'm going to set the date and the time. So I'll set it to start at 3. And let's say that this was a repeating weekly class. I don't actually want to change the end date because the class is always going to meet on a Tuesday. And so I want to keep the end date also on a Tuesday, and it's an hour-long class. But if it's going to repeat weekly, what I would want to do is use this repeat feature. The only time you'd want to change the end date is if you are setting up, let's say, 
a weekend course that repeats every single weekend, or you have, you're scheduling a one-time, you know, weekend workshop, then you might want to change the, change the end date. Otherwise, you almost always want to leave the end date the same as the start date if it's just a, a normal class or another event that only meets a couple of hours. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the repeat. So let's say I wanna have this class repeat every Tuesday. It's gonna repeat on a weekly basis. Um, it's gonna repeat every week on the Tuesday. And I'm gonna say that I'm gonna be offering this class until the end of the year. So I'll have it um, stop repeating as of the 31st of December. I'll go ahead and click done. And if this was an online event, then I could go ahead and click online event. And you'll see that I have the option to um, paste in a website URL uh, and paste in a, let's say I wanted to use, uh, you know, Google. Uh, I'll just do this as an example. Uh, Join by Google Meet. And I would put that in here. Um, and I would not necessarily click this as a public link because if it was public, it means that anyone would be able to see this uh, URL to join the class. Instead, I want to keep that private so that only people who register and or pay for the event, if I set that up, will get the link. So uh, you also see that you can, there's a direct integration with Zoom. So if you want to do that, you can click on this button and it'll automatically create the meeting for you in Zoom. So there's this uh, direct integration option as well, um, which can make it very simple to just use if you want to use Zoom. So now I'll go ahead and click done. And you'll notice that that's set up now as an online event. I don't need to fill out the physical address because this is an online event, but I could if I wanted to. Uh, if I was having an online event, or sorry, an in-person event instead of an online event. Finally, I'll set a price for this uh, particular offering that meets every week. Let's say it's a $10 class. And if I have a maximum capacity, so let's say that for, you know, this online event, I'm going to have a maximum capacity of 15. If I need to set anything else, like, for example, I need to have a waiver, I could set that up and I can choose a default waiver. Or I can create my own waiver. Uh, if I want to accept online payments, I can do that. If you have to pay in order to register, I can use that feature. Um, or if I want to allow tiered pricing or different options like a sliding scale, or if I want to make it donation based, then I could click here. Now notice you can turn these off. So if I only wanted to have this be um, a free event that you had to register for, but there was no payment, I would just click allow registration. If I wanted it to be a free event, but include a waiver, I can turn that on. If I want to allow registration, waiver, and payment, then I get all of these different options. So notice that you can decide how you want to set up and schedule your um, your particular offering. So in this case, I am going to um, accept online payments. I'm going to have it go to the bank account that I have set up, and I'm going to choose to pass these fees on to my students and clients rather than absorbing the fees myself. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and create this event. And now what you'll see is that it schedules it on Tuesday, but if I go into next week, it shows up, so it's repeating, and that's that repeat function. But if I go out into January, because remember I had it stop at the end of December, you will not see it uh, scheduled on the schedule there because it's, uh, it's ended. So that's how you can uh, set up and use the schedule feature. Again, if you want to use more of the advanced features with um, setting up courses and event series, then please watch the video on event series. If you want to learn more about appointments, please watch the video on appointments and how to schedule those. So a lot of uh, really, um, you know, different important features within the scheduling functionality with Offering Tree, and we look forward to seeing all that you have to offer.